everyone, it's Nick with NJ Valenti Art, and today's video, I'm going to cover Affinity's new image trace feature, so let's get started. Okay, so we have a new document open, and now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and pull in a flattened PNG image in order for us to actually use the image trace feature on. Now there's one of two ways you could go about importing an image in um, to a new document. You need to come up here to File and Open, and then open up that file in its own window which we can then copy and paste into this file here. Or you could use the place feature either by coming to file place or using the place tool feature. And this will let us place the image directly into the file and the document that we're currently working in. So we can scale this up just a bit and then let's, um, let's zoom in on it a little bit. So this is a PNG and as we scroll in here you could see the pixelated edges. So what we want to go ahead and do with this PNG selected is we'll come right up here to Vector, Image Trace. So we have Edge stress Threshold and Curve Fitting Tolerance. So you can adjust these and it will affect the way it is being um, vectored. We'll leave it at 50 and 40% right now. We'll just click Apply. Then what we're going to have to do is we're going to come in here it is now a group. We're going to open it up. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the first curve. Come all the way down, holding shift. I'm going to drag these outside of that PNG group layer there. I'm going to go ahead, right click, and group them. So now they will be in their own group. And then we still have the white square um, as well. That we can go ahead and just delete. And now we're left with our fully vectored group. And if we scroll in here, you can see there are no more of those pixelated edges the further we zoom in. All right, so let's try a slightly more detailed uh, image. So I've imported using the place tool, this PNG image here. If we come up to vector, we can see that image trace is not available. What we have to make sure we do is we have to make sure that we rasterize the layer first. So right click, rasterize. And then if we come up to vector, you'll see that the image trace feature is now available. So you go ahead and click on that. You can see how it makes that change initially here. Down here we have a few options, uh, no split view, split view, and mirror view. Um, if we were to click on split view, we can move this around and we can see what our, uh, what the image trace gives us after and what it looked like before. So you can see the pixelation here on the right and the crisp, crisp vector here on the left. You also have a mirror view if you wanted to get a look at the full view um, of the vector versus the imported uh, image we're working with here. Or we could go to no split view. Um, again, you could play around with these. And depending on the image, you'll get some different results. This is changing it only slightly in certain areas because we've already got a pretty separated image here between the lights, the darks, the various colors. So we'll go somewhere here in the middle and we'll go ahead and click apply. And now you can see that within this has now become a grouped layer. You have all of your different curves in here and your now vector image. So this is a good place to start with uh, recreating any sort of designs. You could always come in here and tweak and change the things that you need to as need be. And so just to play around a little bit, I've imported this uh, photo of a red panda in here. So what we'll go ahead and do is we'll just uh, see what kind of effects we could get by using image trace on this. So let's uh, go ahead and rasterize it. Then we'll come up here to, again, vector image trace. So if we have the edge threshold about 50%, you can see how it picks up um, with inside the uh, red panda himself, with inside the edges. So edge threshold controls how much in or outside uh, the edge of the image, say, that the image trace will kind of bleed into, I suppose. So if we lower this a little bit, you'll see we'll get a slightly better result. So now you can have, we have clear separation between the red panda and the background. Um, if we play with our curve fitting tolerance, let's just up that a little bit. You'll see how some of the vectors on the inside will change just a little bit. If we lower it. Okay, so slight differences, stuff that you can kind of play around a little bit with on your own. Let's go ahead and just apply that. 
So now we essentially have a fully vectored image of a little red panda here. Um, yeah, so it might be something to play around with, um, something we could use uh, some different effects on and whatnot, but it also works on images, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, I think there's quite a bit of, um, you know, room in order to use the image trace feature, and I know it was a popular request for a lot of people, so. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know what you think about Affinity's new image trace feature in the comments. You can support the channel directly with the Buy Me A Coffee link in the description, and join me on Patreon for vector assets and more. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss any new videos. Until next time.